Hi, I'm Bex Hybrid sales intern Rachel Guerin. I am at the Bex Hybrids London Practical Farm Research Facility with team sales agronomist Alex Johnson. Today we're going to be talking about tissue testing. One question we have to ask on tissue testing is why tissue test? And tissue testing is like a checkup on your crop. Corn crop in Ohio is around V5, give or take. I've seen as small as V3 and as big as about V9 on earlier planted corn. And soybean plants are anywhere from uh, VE up to about uh, third trifoliate, V3. Uh, and I have seen some beans that are beginning to flower. With tissue testing, uh, a couple of reasons to tissue test would be to diagnose problems. If you're seeing problems in your field, a tissue test can be a tool to help diagnose what's going on in those areas. Another reason would just be to do a checkup on your crop and see what nutrient levels you're seeing in your crop to see how your starter or fertility program is working out. So with that, let's talk about how to collect a good tissue test. First of all, what kind of bag do you use? First of all, don't use a plastic bag. That's the wrong kind of bag to use. If you have just a regular paper sack, like you pack your lunch in, that's okay. There's also different kinds of special bags from uh, different tissue testing companies. These are great. They hold about the right amount uh, to do a tissue test. Um, the other things that I like to take with me when I'm in a field, I take a bucket and I take a soil probe for me because depending on what type of problem we're diagnosing, sometimes I'll take a soil sample to test the soil right where I'm taking the tissue test to see how they correlate. If, are the nutrients there and the plant's just not getting it? Or is there a nutrient, deficient, nutrient deficiency in the soil that we need to correct? So I like to take those with me along with a soil sampling bag. So those are the things that I take with me. We're going to go out to the field and Rachel's going to show us how to collect a tissue test. V3 to V5 is a great time to collect tissue samples and corn plants. When the corn is under a foot tall like this, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the plant about an inch above the soil line. You're going to make sure that your knife is clean, that you're not getting any soil contamination. Cut the plant and then place it into your proper paper bag and send it off to the lab. And what you're going to do is take about 15 plants for a representative sample of your corn population. When tissue testing with corn that is taller than a foot, you're going to take the newest unfurled leaf from the plant. With this plant that's going to be right here, and you're going to take 15 of these leaves from 15 individual plants within your population. So tissue testing soybeans is a little bit different than corn. I'm going to demonstrate here with this plant. You're going to take a leaf from the newest trifoliate. You know that because the leaves are completely unfurled and no longer touching. You're just going to pluck one of these leaves and you're going to take leaves from 25 different plants. As I finish up talking about tissue testing today, some of the last things I want to mention are some of the most important. So here's an example of a tissue test I took over the weekend where there was a poor area of the field and a good area. And so I have two different samples. The important thing is to fill out the bag, the sample ID and who's sending it in, and also filling out a submittal form to send in with your sample. There's a lot of different places we can send a tissue test. Uh, and a lot of different labs we can send them off to to get an analysis. The cost is normally around 20, 23 bucks per sample. And in the example of soybeans, it may be a timely time to sample and you'll have time to go ahead and make a FOIA application if you want to. But the question we got to ask as farmers is what do we do with the results once we get them back? Some answers will be if you're really deficient in a micronutrient, maybe you'll be able to foliar apply some of that nutrient with your herbicide application. Or it may simply be, I have my soil sample, which has been showing low. My tissue test has also been showing that. I need to do something different in the following years and maybe add that into my starter or into my dry program to help solve a problem for future years. We're all striving for higher yields and to farm more profitably. And tissue testing can be one tool we use to help improve our yields by making sure our crop is not starved of any given nutrient. The last part of this is what do we do when we get the results back? 
Some examples of nutrients I've seen low this year as I've tissue tested are sulfur and boron. Uh, boron is an example of a nutrient that's been low in a lot of our tests and can be applied foliar. So you could put it in with your herbicide application post. Another, uh, sulfur, on the other hand, uh, we don't get as much acid rain as we used to, which used to feed our crop with sulfur. Now we're seeing soil tests and tissue test levels go low. So that may be a piece of your puzzle for next year, uh, putting some sulfur in with your starter or side dress. In conclusion, you know, you can tissue test yourself or you may choose to have your trusted consultant or retailer, uh, someone help you with that, and that's fine. Thank you for tuning in to our tissue testing video today. Be looking forward to more updates from the Bex Hybrids London Practical Farm Research Site.